Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Syntegrator, and this is another one of my answers to questions videos. So, I have a lot of people checking out um, my panel rebuilding for the Juno 106. And, of course, core to the panel rebuilding process is the sliders themselves, and they can get dirty and crusty, or they can even stop working altogether because the carbon trace in them gets broken or, you know, over time, the amount of crap in there being dragged around on them degrades them until they no longer work properly. So what you want to be able to do when you have a troublesome slider is pop it out uh, using a desoldering tool or even some braid if you're very good with braid. And once you get it out, uh, here's how you test it. That's really not that hard. Um, just a little bit of background here. The Juno 106 uses a single-sided uh, variable resistor slider and uh, it, it can use stereo ones so you know this is there's one trace on this side and in most cases there isn't a trace on this side but I have seen Juno 106's uh, fairly common run where I guess Roland couldn't get the, the, the mono ones easily but they could get the stereo ones and they designed this board to accept both it just doesn't use the trace on the other side but it's the trace on the right side you want and when I say right side have a look here you can see that there's a little little notch cut. That should be in the upper left hand side when you do this test if you want to match the orientation that I'm using and also the orientation that's used when you look at the board itself like this. That's how they, they go in. <clears throat> so let's have a look on the back side and we'll see what the terminals are. Uh, basically there's a bunch of grounds. You know these two side here are the chassis and then there are some grounding pins as well and uh, when you desolder this you may discover that some of the pinpoints actually will delaminate fairly easily because all they are is a little ring around a, a little post which isn't even being used and that's basically because um, you know they're unused and so Roland hasn't connected them to anything as a result the little ring it heats up super fast because there's no way for the heat to radiate away and you can delaminate the ring but that's another point let's have a look here um, I've got the second terminal going up. So this one's not used. The one on the bottom is not used. But this one is connected. And then this one's not connected. And then this one is connected. So we're dealing with the... And I, I know what you're thinking. You're going, that's not the second terminal. That's the first one. That's because I flipped it over. See? This is actually the second terminal. All right? Are we good? Do we all agree? Okay. Second terminal. All right. So now let's have a look here. Um, this is a 50 kilo ohm resistor, variable resistor. And in fact, that's a nominal value. As you can see, the very lowest it's registering here is 11, right? 11 ohms. Yeah, there we are. Got to get it at the right angle. 11 ohms, and then all the way up to the top, uh, 66.4 kilo ohms. So that's its nominal range. It's basically nominally 50 kilo ohms, but it's more. Now, as you push the slider up through its range of operation, let me see if I can do this, and hopefully I don't drop everything. Um, we can see the value climbing, and that's good. There will be moments where, if you're using a digital meter like me, it goes overload, not overload, but zero, disconnected. But if you do it, yeah, do you see that? Don't worry about that. All sliders do that when you look at them on this digital scope, uh, digital meter, sorry. All right, so that's really all you're looking for. If you don't get this behavior, then the slider is no good. So I hope that explained it. Um, everything else applies. Make sure they're clean. Make sure they're properly oiled and whatnot. Uh, one of the things I find is if you're not going to open it up and do a bunch of work on it, what you can do is use a little bit of this deoxid fader lube. It's very good stuff. What I do is I'll put in a little bit right here around the joint where the plastic meets the can and then I'll put a little strip of it down on the on the contact strip. And uh, that will do the trick, provided that you're dealing with a clean fader to begin with. If the fader is dirty, adding oil to the equation will just, you know, make things messy. Um, what you want to do at that point is use a fine uh, foam-tipped Q-tip and get it in there and try, and try and lift out dirt as possible. But be careful, because if you use... Um, any kind of solvent, um, like IPA or whatever, the IPA will actually soften up and dissolve the carbon traces as you rub over it. So, um, you know, try not to do that. That's a, that's a bad thing. Murray from Kiwi Technics uh, taught me that one. So, here we are. That's it. That's all I can say. That's how you test a Juno 106 slider. So, this is Syntegrator, signing off.